So Hosanna, it's so good to have you here this morning. Isn't it awesome? If you're a new person here, we want to give you an amazing Hosanna. Welcome. It's good to have you here. We love having new people here at Hosanna. So we really hope that you feel at home here, that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the service, and stick around afterwards and catch up. Now, this morning's service is such a special service. Why? Because it is Mother's Day this morning. So can we give our mothers a massive round of applause? A wonderful woman. Awesome to have you here this morning. And I reckon on the count of three, we should say Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. So are we ready? One, two, three. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, that is awesome. Let's give it up for those mothers again. That's great. On that point, mothers, if you've got children between the ages of three to six, there is a program that's very well organised and very fun, running out those back doors and you just turn to your left, it's called Rainbow Land, so feel free if you want to just, just take your children out there now. This morning's service is packed out with dance, drama, song, music, spoken word, multimedia, it's a cracker of a service here this morning for you all, so you can all sit back, relax, and enjoy. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's check out this Maori media. my mummy Your patient sounds like 
Don't need to ask you to stand because you're already doing that. So we're going to join together and lift our voices and our smiles to the heavens.
your name to be changing in my hand. Oh, reverse, reverse! Well, what do I do? Do I get the midwife? I'll get the midwife. <gasps> Hold the baby, you'll forget all about the pain. What about the feelings and the nappies? Let me sleep. Oh, they're nothing compared to the first time she has steps or she says, Mama. time and that trusting look as you take her and then when she has her first baby you can be there to hold her hand and say it's going to be all right. I just don't think I can do this. Trust me you're going to be a great mum.
Thank you to a woman that is standing. young children, it's 12 years and under, every day you're a nurse, a teacher, a cheerleader, ready to give big hugs and wipe those tears away, to sort out the squabbles, to invent new games. Thank you for all the nights of broken sleep that you've endured, the days of juggling a million tasks, all while being able to make your child feel that he or she is the centre of your heart and your mind. God sees all the times that you make sacrifices that you put your children's needs above your own, that you keep on going for their sake when it is hard, development and is shaping their character. Your role is of priceless value. May you be refreshed physically and spiritually today. May you know God's incredible love for you and the great significance that you have in God's eyes. Thank you, mums, of 12 years children and under. If you'd like to take a seat, you can. Now, a special message to the mothers of teenagers. Woo! <laughs> as a driver, as diplomat, as career counsellor, as law enforcer, as protector, motivator and guide. You make so much happen and you hold so much together. <clears throat> Your role is a courageous one. You show trust when it's hard to. You're learning to let go and let your children make decisions for themselves. You cheer them on when things go well and you hold together the pieces when they don't go well. Thank you for investing so much of yourself, for risking your heart, for making the difficult calls, and for believing in your sons and daughters. Thank you for being an immovable rock in their lives. May God give you peace beyond understanding and joy through every challenge. Thank you for the mums of teenagers, and sit down if you like. To the mothers of adult children, you continue to have such a significant role in your children's lives. With wise counsel, encouragement and support, you make a difference like no one else can. Thank you for continuing to be there for your children through all the stages of their lives. For taking some of the weight off their shoulders. For celebrating the high moments and nursing the low ones. Thank you for having the grace to allow your relationship with them to blossom into friendship. The grandmas in the room, the grandmothers in the room. Thank you for being the greatest babysitter in the world for passing on your knowledge, for understanding the challenges, and for valuing your grandchildren just as much as their parents do. May each of you, all of you, know how valuable you are and how significant the contribution you have made. May God bless you today with a deep sense of joy and fulfillment. Thank you to the grandmas and the mothers of our children. To all other women that are in the room, standing or sitting, as sisters, as aunties, as daughters, as friends, as role models, you enrich the lives of the children and parents in your family and in your community. Thank you for your encouraging words you bring, the practical help, the commitment of time, the friendship, I love the friendship part, the organizing, the fun, and the generosity. Without you so much would not happen nearly as well, it would not happen at all. Thank you for playing a part in the lives of your friends and family. Thank you for bringing your invaluable contribution to this world. May God know, may you know, sorry, may you know God's love and acceptance of you as his daughters. And may his special blessings be upon you today. Thank you. You know, it's so special and such a powerful day. You know, when you think about it, without mums, we wouldn't even be here. <laughs> if we weren't here, we wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to have so much fun. <laughs> and every one of us is on a journey with a mum. I've lost my mum. She died just a few short years ago. And uh, I remember when I was little, one of the things my mum used to do, she used to knit a lot. Is she used to make these beautiful um, feral jerseys. And everywhere I went, people used to say, where did, where did you get that jersey from? It's so beautiful. 
Mum used to make some, and they were masculine ones, they weren't sort of, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Mum knew how to do it. And mums tend to be like that, mostly. Yeah, might make some mistakes, but when you weigh the balance, there's not very many mums make many mistakes. You know? And uh, it's the way it is, and it's awesome. So I want you to have an awesome Mother's Day. And I personally want to give you a big hand, and I think the guys should give a big hand with us. Now, you will have noticed that Jackie also mentioned women who are not mums here, not mums yet, or have not had the experience of being mums, either by their own choice or other reasons. We want you to feel just as special, because you were made as women. And even though you may not have your own children yet, or you may not, not have children, you're mums to many other people quite often. I've actually watched this over the years. There's, there's some folk who have not um, been able to have their own children in the, in the Christian community, and some of those ones are so special to young ones around uh, the, the church and around the community. And I think we should say a big thanks to those ones as well. Amen. Amen. I'm reflecting. You know that the scripture has a little saying, and uh, this is my wife. She's out looking after little, little children out, out, the, out in the lounge room there this morning, and uh, along with Tony and, and, and uh, you know, who help us there. And uh, I put this photo up because this is one that applies so deeply to my wife, so powerfully to my wife. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies, and I found one. My wife is a woman of an incredibly noble character. But there's plenty of women around here who are. There's another two. Uh, you know, the truth of the matter is, when you get a woman who has noble character... The statement that she's worth far more than rubies is actually real because the difference that a, a woman will make in your life is profound. I actually have a little slight disagreement with Paul in the scripture. He gave his opinion, and it was his opinion, he stated that, that um, it's better not to marry. Well, I want to say that was his life experience, and it's great, and I think it is for some people. But for me, without the ruby, the woman that's worth more than rubies, I just wouldn't have survived. <laughs> Some of the quotes that came up earlier, I had a little group sitting behind me. I normally sit on this side. It's fun sitting on this side this morning, especially with some of the quotes that came up. You know the unknown ones? Uh, you know the unknown, who, unknown authors of some of those quotes? Teresa was laying claim to them. <laughs> you know? But I, th I think we can, we can all lay claim to some of the special things that we, we reflect on, those moments of truth that maybe we didn't think to write down. But they're real. They're very real in our life. And a wife of noble character carries those kinds of things. Then I want to go to a, a woman who is also a kind-hearted woman. And uh, there's some kind-hearted woman there. Gains respect. You know, sometimes people say to me, you know, I don't have anybody's respect. And I sit there and I think to myself, do I tell you? Is it safe for me to tell you? If I tell you, am I going to feel unsafe? The truth is, though, we can choose to be kind-hearted. And when we're really kind-hearted, there's a fruitfulness that comes out of it that's stated so plainly there. You end up with real respect. And you end up with this equal respect happening. And it's a beautiful thing to be in the middle of. There's some of the women here in the church here who work so profoundly well together. And they're kind-hearted people. You always know they're going to go out of their way. You'll always know the certain kinds of food they cook. And I better not mention them in case you thought you were one of them. And then I mention a food you, you cook, but I don't mention it. So all the foods that are nice. <laughs> you know, I feel safe then. <laughs> you can be kind-hearted to me now. You think I'm talking about you, isn't it? No, but that's the reality. I want to give some advice now to the rest of us who are here.
Because, you know, it's all about mums, but sometimes it's all about what we do for our mums. And the scripture gives us another piece of advice. It's a really great piece of advice. It says this, treat older women as mothers and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Paul's writing that, and I agree with him on that issue. You see, I want to... I want to actually get a, a woman who's a mum who's willing to be a volunteer for me. Uh, a, a woman who's a mum willing to be a volunteer. Anne's going to come. She volunteered. So let's give her a hand. Come up here, Anne. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a real clear message. Is what you give is what you get. Put your hands out there for me, please, Anne. Now, I normally wouldn't do this to a mum on a Mother's Day, but today I'm doing it because I want you to see something really clearly. No coffee, no bickies. <laughs> Now, now let, me, let, let, let me show you something here. If you treat them badly, if you treat your mums badly, you're going to tie them up. They're not going to be the person that they need to be. They're going to feel limited. They can't offer both hands of love and care with openness. They will feel restricted. They will feel frustrated. They will often even feel hurt that their children would do this to them. It's a painful thing. So you treat Anne, I guess we'd have to call her an older woman, not a younger one. You know, I'm not saying she's old, come on over there. <laughs> you need to treat her actually with respect, with purity, with the beauty of what she deserves, simply because... She's made in God's image. And this woman, I've watched her. I'm glad she volunteered. I couldn't have chosen a better person in the whole congregation. Because when she came here, she was finding life pretty hard. This woman has grown like a flower. There's something very special happened to Anne. And I've heard people talk about it. So I'm not just getting up here saying this. For those of you who don't know Anne, it's been transformational stuff. And what actually happened, I think, is that she was undone. And people started giving her time and respect, and it gave her freedom. You don't have, you don't have to do a... Uh... No, you don't need a waxing anymore, okay? Let's give her a big hand. Come on, thanks. It's a very painful hair remover. You see, the truth of the matter is, though, that some of us feel bad, and we, you know, maybe we haven't done things so well. It's just for the wider community, for all of us who haven't treated women in the way that we should. Well, the truth of the matter is, it's never too late to start honouring your mum. It's never, ever too late to start honouring your mum in your life. Because if you do, something will happen. It will change her life, and you will be the agent of change. So if you know you've had a difficult relationship, and I, I need to tell you this, I didn't have an easy relationship with my mum. I didn't have an easy one at all. But the one thing that happened to me when I was a very, very young Christian, and I got very angry at their reaction to my having become a Christian, because they, they were quite angry about me becoming a Christian quite very angry. I went to my bedroom and I said to God, God, you give me a scripture I can slam my parents with before I go. And so I did something, because I didn't know the Bible. See, as a two-week-old Christian, I'd mentioned to them I'd become a Christian. So I did this. You know, any of you done this? It's kind of like you know, going to somebody who, who doesn't know what they're talking about. But I went like this and I went. And I thought, the words that are under my finger, God, you guide my finger. The words that are under my finger will slam my parents. Fair enough? 
sounded good because I'd just picked on me. Fair deal to get back at them. So I decided the words were under my finger, the one. So I very carefully looked and I lifted up my finger and under it, it said, honor your father and your mother. I got so angry at God. I tell you, I was very angry. He, he was meant to be on my side, not theirs. I was the Christian. They weren't. Why would he be on their side? You know? But you know, I, I did everything I could to do to honor my mother and my father. And uh, it cost me sometimes. When it came to my 21st, I didn't want alcohol at my 21st birthday party. They said, there's going to be alcohol there whether you like it or not. I sort of thought that I'd suggest that I wasn't going to come to my 21st, but then realized that that wasn't going to be honoring to them at all. And uh, it wasn't a good experience in some ways, although we did have some hilarity with one of my parents' very close friends who decided to ride my penny farthing that I'd built. The penny farthings with a big wheel and a little wee wheel, you know, the old bikes without any chain. And uh, sh- we were never allowed our hands on mum's flower garden. We used to look after mum's flower garden because it was either look after or die. And uh, that day, this lady who was, who was um, trying to ride the penny farthing fell into the garden a number of times because of the alcohol. And uh, my mother never ever, her rose garden never ever recovered. It got flattened. But you know, I, I respected my mum and my dad. And there's some good things that came out of that in the end. See, the, thing, the reason we need to do this is actually really solid. You see, the reality is women are a unique creation. We're not going to talk about the blokes right now. They're rough and tumble today. But women are really a unique creation. That's the reality. And the second thing, in terms of that, because of that uniqueness and the fact that God made them, he actually loves them. Even when things are a bit tough, he still loves women. He created them in his image. That's what the scripture says. And uh, you need to understand, if you're a woman here today, you're special, unique, and beautiful. And I don't care what the glossy magazines say. You know what? I get repulsed by these sexual skinny figures who often don't have much up front in any case if they're models who are considered the ideal woman in the world. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Women are beautiful. Now, some of us guys might not be so handsome, but in God's eyes, we're all beautiful. It has nothing to do with popularity contest. It has to do not just with the outside either. It has to do with far more than that. And we need to have our woman understanding this. We need as blokes, if we're blokes, or sons and daughters, if we are that, we need to communicate this message very, very clearly that we know that the woman that we know, God loves them. They're special, unique, and beautiful. Amen? Come on, guys. That should have been a big resounding. Amen. Not this. Amen. Okay? Isn't that true? Amen? Amen. Still quite a few women's voices, not as many. Men, just men this time. Are we in agreement? That was better. Yeah. See, because if you really believe this, if you really, really believe this, you will realize that, that believing this will impact every bit of your thinking, your managing of yourself, and those around you. If you don't believe it, then it will affect you the other way. If you believe this, it makes you different. My wife believes she's beautiful because I tell her regularly that she's beautiful. And the more I tell her, the more, more fun we have as a couple. We can go out and enjoy just being together at the beach. We can go, um, do all sorts of things together with much more freedom because she knows she's special and she's beautiful in my eyes as well as God's. But knowing she's beautiful in God adds an extra dimension that is absolutely beyond what I could ever give her. The second aspect of this, in terms of God-loving woman, 
It's this one here. Here's another one. You see? If your photo's not up here, it's because you didn't let the camera get near enough to you. All right? I only have the photos that are taken by people who allow them to take them. So if you're not up there and you, you haven't been in a photo for ages on my screen, it's because you haven't let anybody take your photo. All right. Believing this will impact your self-worth and therefore your confidence. When you start to really believe that God loves you, then it makes a huge difference to the way that you function. If you believe that you're independent of God and you're free from God and you don't have to um, be in God's face because you don't like God's rules, then I've got to tell you something. You've missed the point. Because God's not about rules. That's what humans are about. God's about love and about a powerful love. Not a wishy-washy thing, not a, a carte blanche, everybody can do what the hang they like. But a love that says, I know what's best for you, and I'm going to help you on the journey so that you can feel the most fulfilled person you could ever feel. That's God's intention for every single woman in this room. Amen? Guys? Amen? Yeah, a wee bit better. They're getting there, ladies. Just pray for them. Okay, the next one. You are special, unique, and beautiful. Believing this will mean that the way you handle relationships will be totally different. It will be so dynamically affected that you will develop healthy, lively, and loving environments wherever you are. That's what will happen. When you absolutely believe this, it's going to change how you function. Now, I've been flat on my back for the past week, and only Friday I started, I started recovering. I, wasn't, I don't normally get unwell, but I got this cold thing, and, and it, it really laid me low. My wife was there for me absolutely in every way. And she was just so beautiful. And one of the things, that, if you know my wife well enough, she is a person who just loves to care for others. She loves to care for little kids especially. She's a great hostess. Our house has been like a train station over the years. As the children have been growing up, there's been goodness knows how many young people through our home. Now they've gone, we're starting to get some of the older people coming. Great. We love that. That's starting to happen. But it's this, this a journey that we go on. And, and, and when you really believe that God cares for you like this, it's going to change how you function in these ways as well. But in the, term, in the terms of the whole thing, though, I want to give you one piece of advice. It's great advice for mums. Once again, it comes from Scripture. It comes from Proverbs 31. Charm is deceptive. And beauty is fleeting. And some of you have told, tell me that. I mean, some of you have told me, you know, I, I used to be beautiful when I was young. Oh, well, that's okay. Doesn't mean to say you're not beautiful now. It's just, but, but, but it does fleet, doesn't it? it? It does fly away sometimes. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now, I told you earlier that um, if your photo wasn't there, then uh, it's, it's kind of your fault for not standing in front of the camera. But I wonder... I, wanna, I want you to ask the question of yourself today. Now, what is the beauty that I actually have? Is it just something on the outside, or is it something I'm really starting to grab hold of what it is on the inside? Because I can tell you now, I have been pastoring 31 years, and there's something I've noticed that's really peculiar. When I see women who are angry and frustrated and, and you know, constantly get annoyed and all the rest of it, they age quicker. They age quicker. There's no two ways about it. They age quicker. When I see a woman who really honors God, and it's not talking about fear, it's not talking about the kind of fear like we go, <gasps> that's not the fear it's talking about. It's talking about holding God in high honor and awe and respecting Him so greatly you wouldn't want to do anything to offend Him. That's, that's the kind of fear it's talking about, okay? And uh, But a woman who holds God in that kind of place is to be praised. Why? Because she's a different woman in the way she lives. The inner beauty becomes a powerful thing that changes the world around her. That's actually what happens. 
It's the reality. And I know some lovely people out there who don't know God yet, not on that journey with them yet, who are quite nice people, but there's something very different about somebody who has a deep relationship with God. I'm not talking about just going to church on Sunday or any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about a woman who really does put God in the right place in her life. It's going to be different. And you can ask the question, why am I not there? Well, the reality is, if you, if you watch, you can see the woman who praises God doesn't have any questions. A woman who fears the Lord doesn't have any questions that are unanswered. Things change. Things are different. When they have trouble with their kids, they pray instead of doing other things. It makes a huge difference. So I want to finish this morning with this last slide. Happy Mother's Day. And what I want to suggest in terms of that, if you're connected God's way, you know, you will grow, glow. I shouldn't have and in there. I forgot to take the and out. If you be connected God's way, oh no, it should have and. And you will grow, glow. If you are connected in a way that God means it, and that's not just with God, that's with your children, that's with your husband or, or your ex-partner, you can still do it God's way. It doesn't matter what it is. Because God's intention is that you will be a glowing, radiant woman. It comes from the inside. It comes on the outside. And some of you already are. A lot of you are. Some of you have just started glowing little bits. Don't think, I'm not like that. I'm not really fully glowing, so therefore I'm no good. That's not true. The the, the important thing isn't what you have achieved. It's who you are today and what you're going to be tomorrow that makes a difference. Amen? See, I know people who have achieved a huge amount in their life, done some great things, walked with God, but they just as easily walked away. That's no good. Doesn't count for anything. I want you to know when you go out of this place today, that you've got this inner glow that happens inside that's going to be so radiant, it'll shine on the outside and it'll transform every part of your life. The satisfaction you have will be deeper than you've ever known. The blessing you have in your home and your life will be stronger than you've ever experienced. There'll be a sense for each one of you that you will know the richness of God's grace and you'll know the strength of his wisdom, that you'll know good health and strength that you'll know his blessing in everything that you do and you'll know the blessing of your children and you'll know the blessing of those around you. May God bless you. Let's pray together. Let's talk to God. Father God, first of all, we want to thank you for giving us our mums. And Lord, even for some of us who have had difficulty, we want to thank you for the good things that we had and not to focus on the negative. And God, this, some of us here have had an incredibly awesome time with our, with our mums and we didn't do so well in our response. And so we'd, we'd ask you to forgive us for that. And right now, we really want to pray that you guide each one of us in both being good mums or the honouring of our mums. And Lord, we'd ask as we go out this place, that you'd forgive us for the times when we've failed, whatever way it is, so that as we go out this place, we might know we're unique and, and beautiful for a woman. We might know your grace and love, and we might never visit the things that have caused destruction in our lives. Instead, we might know the beauty of the freedom of the inner beauty that you've offered each one and that the mums here, especially today, might know that in an intensity and a strength that is beyond what they've ever known before. We pray this blessing on them, we pray in Jesus' name. And they all said? They all said? And I want to finish just by reading you one last little verse of Scripture. It says this, I'm going to miss out the Father. So just imagine I haven't said father. Honor your mother so that life may live long, so that you may live live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Or another version in the New Testament says it like this in Ephesians. Honor your mum 
which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. May God have that as your experience, each one of you. God bless you.